film actor, uh, uh, noted for his work uh, in the inspirational film uh, Fireproof. He's also known for his memorable roles on Growing Pains and the Left Behind Boys. Yes. Uh, and he's co host of uh, the Way of the Magic Television Series. Uh, he spends most of his time producing uh, television and film projects and speaking around the country, teaching uh, people around the country how to share their faith and live out of gospel. Wow. That's a little scary, huh? Kirk and his wife are the founders of Camp Firefly, uh, which is a camp for seriously ill children and their families. Uh, together they live in California and have sex children. Ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Cameron. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It's an honor for me to be here. Uh, thank you. CPAC, thank you, conservative friends, and especially thank you all, you moms and dads who love this country like I do, and who love your children enough to teach them to hold tightly to the truths that have made this nation so great. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of all that God has called us to be. You know, I'm, I'm a bit of a, a fish out of water here. Uh, this is a new venue for me. I'm not a politician. Uh, I'm an actor. I'm a husband. I'm a father of six children. And I think in the past I've given lip service to these values as an American citizen. But now more than ever, with my children's skin in the game, they mean more to me than they ever have in the past. I had the privilege this morning of being with my uh, executive producer and friend, John Bona, um, and also the Senate Chaplain, Dr. Black, and we prayed together in the Capitol building. And it was so good to be, to be there with men who still hold these truths to be sacred and are living them out in their life, even here in Washington. You know, the president that stands out most in my mind, as I'm sure it does with many of you, uh, in my lifetime that has made the most profound impact on me was President Ronald Reagan. And as a young man, I had the privilege of being on stage with President Reagan and meeting him. And I knew he was a great man at the time, but I didn't really understand all that he stood for and all that he lived for until the last few years when I've been doing research for a brand new documentary film that I'm producing called Monumental, In Search of America's National Treasure. And I interviewed his son, Michael Reagan, and spent some time at the Western White House the Reagan Ranch. And that's where I learned about his deep commitment to the history and heritage of our nation and to restoring these great truths. He famously communicated in one of his speeches, in light of the crisis that we face in our country and in the West in general, that the choice that we have is not left or right, but up or down. It's either going up to the maximum potential of individual liberty and freedom uh, under the law and blessing under God or down to the what he called the ant heap of totalitarianism. And I think uh, back in my growing pains days I wouldn't have understood what all of that meant, but now that I understand the difference between freedom at the individual level and at the state level over and against the top-down system that strips you of freedom and, in essence, enslaves people is, is striking. And I believe that as we look around in our nation today, we can see that it's even more critical and even more of a monumental moment in history for us to be making the right choice between up or down. America has always been, in my mind, the envy of the world. It's always been the richest, freest, most prosperous nation. It's been strong, it's been secure. People uh, bust down uh, walls to get here. But as a father of six, I'm paying more attention to what's really going on. And as I look around, I get this sinking feeling that, that, that we're off track, that there's something sick in the soul of our country. I examine the fruit that's hanging on the tree of America, and I can see that it's rotting. And that concerns me deeply, economically. Uh, $15 trillion in debt. Uh, this, is, this is just devastating. I, I, I understand that morally. 
The very moral fabric of our nation is being eroded. The family is falling apart. Divorce is at an all-time high. Teenage pregnancy, um, drugs, alcohol, things that used to be shameful 50 years ago are now normalized in public school and celebrated on television. Spiritually, our motto in God we trust is written on our, our money, but... Today, teachers are afraid that if they say it in school, they're breaking some sort of law. The meaning of separation of church and state has lost its, uh, its original meaning. It's now a code word for secularizing the state. When something's wrong with the fruit, I've learned you don't take off the fruit and try to fix the fruit. You've got to understand that it's a systemic problem. You've got to dig down and look at the root and find out what's wrong down there. And as I did that, through research for this new film that I'm doing, I found that the problem was worse than I thought it was. History tells me that it tends to repeat itself, and if nations are left long enough, eventually there tends to be some sort of a all-powerful state or ruler that will rise up and... Uh, enslave the people, and the nation will be destroyed from within. It will implode. So I turn on the news, and I'm trying to, to, to understand everyone that I see on Fox and CNN and C-SPAN and everywhere else, and I find that most people are playing the blame game. You know, as, not a, as, an, as an inexperienced politician, uh, I'm not a politician. I'm trying to understand the arguments, and with the right blaming the left, the left blaming the right, business blaming government and government blaming big business and then the church blames the media for all the problems and the media blames religion for all the ills of the world. I'm thinking it's difficult to hear a clear voice on how to get us out of this mess. And then I think to myself, maybe it's simpler than all this. It's got to be. Maybe it's as simple as we've just forgotten what made this country such a great nation in the first place. Maybe we've forgotten who we are and the values that produced out of a wilderness the greatest nation the world's ever known, the freest nation in the world. If only I could go back and talk to the men and women who built this country, they could look at what we're doing and say, here's what you're doing wrong and here's how to fix it. I wish my name was Marty McFly and I had a DeLorean and I could just go back and talk with them and learn from them. But since I'm not, I did the next best thing. I bought a ticket and I went to England, and I retraced the escape route of the pilgrims. Before they were pilgrims, they were called separatists, and I followed them into the dungeons in the castles that they were thrown into, and their underground secret meeting places, and then made a strategic escape to Holland, where they stayed for 12 years before they got on the Mayflower and came across the Atlantic to the New World and laid the foundation for this nation. And what I discovered blew my mind about who they were and why they came here and where they got their ideas from. And it changed everything I thought I knew about the origins of our country and about the pilgrims. They were not just a, a suffering, sacrificing band of wimps and funny costumes with belt buckles on their shoes. These were the radicals of their day. These were the, 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 the free thinkers, the heroes who produced a free enterprise system. They were successful. They formed a constitutional government. Everything that America would become famous for, economic freedom, the ability to own your own land and a business and then bless your family with what you've created and worked hard for, religious freedom, freedom to worship God according to the dictates of your own conscience rather than having a religion crammed down your throat by the government or the king, political freedom, the ability to elect your own leaders Men and women of character. A system that was of the people, by the people, for the people. All of these ideas were planted in the hearts and minds of those pilgrims by their pastor, John Robinson, in Holland. And so you had the seeds of a brand new nation, something that had not been manifested since the ancient Hebrew Republic thousands of years earlier, floating in the belly of a boat across the Atlantic Ocean, being ready to be planted in this virgin soil and give birth to the freest nation in the world 150 years later. And the source of those ideas, the rocket fuel, was so powerful, it gave them great faith. It gave them big, optimistic vision for the future. 
and it gave them unstoppable courage. And the best part about it is that I discovered that they knew we would get off track. They knew, they had the foresight to understand that we were a forgetful and selfish people by nature. We need to be brought back to what is right and true. And so they left us a map, a paper trail that would lead us back to the treasure if we ever forgot our way. And the great thing is, is that this, this map is not hidden. It's not under a monument or buried beneath a lake. It's in plain sight. It's in 180 tons of granite. It's the largest granite monument in America overlooking Plymouth, Massachusetts on top of a hill hidden in a residential area and hardly anyone knows it's there. It is so beautiful. It is so true. And it's so clear. It's called the Monument to the Forefathers. It perfectly lays out the recipe for how to build and sustain a free and just society with faith at the center, transforming the heart from the inside, producing character and morality and courage on the outside that leads to freedom and lasting liberty. And in fact, it's so beautiful, I'm surprised some anti-faith organization has not tried to demo it. I would like for you to watch this trailer of a brand new film coming out in March called Mindmental. Derato, who would have us believe that the United States has reached the zenith of its power, that we're weak and fearful, reduced to bickering with each other. I don't agree that our nation must resign itself to inevitable decline. America is the richest, freest nation the world has ever seen. But as a father of six, I look around and all signs tell me something is sick in the soul of our country. And history tells me that we're headed for disaster if we don't change our course now. The set of ideas that is being implemented and advanced in this capital at this time is terribly frightening to people who are students of history. If you look at the 17 superpowers in history, every single one of them has called themselves exceptional. When you look at the Roman Empire, the parallels to what is going on in America are absolutely frightening. And the question is, are we going to go the right path ourselves, or are we going to continue down the wrong path that so many nations have fallen into? I went on a journey to retrace the footsteps of our forefathers to see if they left us some kind of a map that would guide us back to the foundation of America's success. When I think of pilgrims, I think of what I was taught in history class. I think of pilgrims coming over in these funny black and white suits with big hats and buckles on their shoes. These are the people out of the box. These are the radicals of the day. Can you imagine? Change here. You're open to the elements. You can read about places like this. You can smell the history. You can't paint it. Welcome to the Mayflower too. So we have 102 people in this area. Look at that. Can you imagine you're going to be sharing that? It's actually quite comfortable. <laughs> what I discovered is that our history has not just been forgotten. It's been rewritten. I'm stunned. Just what's on this table, I mean, this alone would, would change everyone's perspective about what made America such a great nation. Time is flying by too quickly, and our children's futures won't wait. We've got to do something now. Why is this monument not being showcased more? It is illustrating the principles of what this country is all about, and falling apart. There is nothing in today's America that cannot be solved by a genuine going back to the American First Principles. That's good news. Very good news. I'm looking for good news. This is the most important journey of my life. My family is worth fighting for, and so is yours. I stand here with you today and add my voice to the increasing realization that we must occupy this land with truth. And moms and dads who love God and will teach their children the right worldview. That we must right our wrongs and heal our land through hard work and sacrifice and charity. 
and get back to a plan that has worked for 400 years. I've learned that hope for my family's future and for our nation does not begin at the White House. It begins at your house and my house. And that the land of the free starts in the homes of the brave. I need your help. I'm asking you to please help me reach families with this message. I'm, I'm eager to get material into your hands and to uh, help you to reach the millions of people that feel like we do. And I believe that together we can secure a monumental future for our children. I have great hope for a bright future and I'm full of optimism. There's two ways that you can help. Number one, buy tickets to see this film. This is a live, one night only, simulcast event in over 500 theaters across the country. Buy tickets to see this event. There will be special guests there with me, musical artists, and you can buy tickets for your family. Experience it as a school or as a church or your political club or local organization. And we will send a shockwave message through this nation that these are the values and this is the, the plan that we want to move ahead with. And number two, get the resources that we have available to pass it on, to spread the word, and go further in teaching our children the true story of America and how to ensure its success for the future. Again, this event is on March 27th and tickets are on sale now. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, Cliff May, President of the Foundation for the Defense of Democracy.